Law enforcement detained at least 35 demonstrators in Atlanta, including an SPLC employee who was arrested while acting and identifying as a legal observer on behalf of NLG News. I would just like to point something out. If uh, you're a lawyer and uh, you're with a bunch of people who, dis- who have decided to rob a bank and you go into the bank with them and you're dressed like them, I'm sorry, you're an accomplice. This is not a protest. The, the legal observers typically go to demonstrations where people are marching down the street, boop, 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 and they watch. And then when the cops act a fool, they say, we saw that. This was a group of terrorists ransacking, breaking onto private, onto government property and burning it to the ground. And then what, an SPLC employee decided to join them just to watch. Yeah, you're not exempt from breaking into a government facility because you're a, an attorney for a nonprofit. So all they've done thus far is admit he was actually there. They say it's part of a months long escalation of police tactics, blah, 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 blah. But the fact that a terror, a, a terrorist cell and a national chapter and anti its international associates have support from the National Lawyers Guild and the Southern Poverty Law Center shows you just how far gone we are and how close we are to a legitimate culture revolution. And I'm sure the left is very excited about it. Of course they are. I mean, they've been, it's something that has been in the works for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. This is not new. This started, I I would say that the foundation was laid in the 80s with Paulo Freire's influence in schools and then with the influence of Powell Freire in the schools of education in the 90s, start pumping out these kids in the, from the humanities departments that all believe that essentially socialism is the way. And I think it goes even farther than that. What was the long march into the institutions? That yeah, was what, that's, the 60s? That was, they started a creep in, right? Was it, it 60s? The, no? the, the term was coined by uh, Antonio Gramsci, who was a... Uh, uh, like McCarthyism and all he that. He wrote it in the 20s. But oh, that, wow, really? Yeah, uh, Antonio Gramsci wrote from an Italian pr- prison in the 20s, and he's the one that came up with the idea that you had to go through the institutions and change the yeah. culture. And they did, and that's exactly what they did. <laughs> well, Mao did it, yeah. and it, he proved that it works, and yeah. now it's being done here. There's a couple ideas pertaining to the long march to, through the institutions, and uh, Yuri Bezmenov, of course, most people who watch the mm-hmm. show are familiar with, talked about the demoralization and the subversion of the United States. This was, of course, during the Cold War. And so one of the scariest theories is the Soviet zombie takedown of the United States. And that idea is the Soviets implanted these ideas into the United States to basically plant seeds that would eventually destroy and uproot this country. We may be experiencing that, but the Soviet Union no longer exists. So this is like, mm. it's 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 kind of creepy. It's like almost perfect for a movie where like a, a spaceship crew comes across. And, actually, I think there's like a Star Trek episode about this. They come to a planet and there's a doomsday weapon armed ready to go because of a war that was going on. The it's Soviet like, Union. It's like the ghost of the Soviet Union is in America now. It's right. Yeah, and it's corrupt. It's the, <laughs> Soviet, <laughs> the Soviet it's, exists. It's just not unified. Yeah. As, yeah, as, crazy. as they were, we were at war, they implanted a poison in the U.S., yep. were destroyed themselves, but that poison remained and the attack was terminal. This is a double knockout. 100%. And I mean, another thing about the institutions and the universities in particular was the... Um, critical race theory, which, you know, we know about that now, it's actually kind of crazy because I remember looking this up back in 2016 and it was all this information about how it got its roots also with the Soviet stuff because they were wanted to have a way of like breaking down what the family unit and, and all those things so that they can be dependent on the state and what have you. But they got its way into Columbia University um, with the Frankfurt School or whatever. And I found all this information about it, and I was, like, researching it. If you look that up now today, it says right-wing conspiracy theory. Yep. Like, there's no actual information documents about it. And I'm like, where did it go? It used to be on the wild, wild west of the Internet. I found it, all the documents. I found it anymore. There was, like, a big moment when Wikipedia, I think, they went in and started changing all the information on the Frankfurt School, calling it a conspiracy theory and stuff. But it Mm. existed, no? And that's (laughs) the academic name. Yeah. 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 Came from Columbia University. And People, Herbert spread. Marcuse and 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 the scholars that were that were involved yeah. in there. And I mean, right now we live in the logic of Herbert Marcuse. That's why we don't have uh, the the federal government going after the left the way they go after the right. Mm-hmm. The left is apologized for, is made excuses for, is allowed to behave in in violent ways in ways that are completely unacceptable for people on the right. And according to Marcuse, he believes that. Even the ideas that would come from the right must be suppressed 